For the last 150 years, few historical groups have managed to captivate the imagination of people around the world as the Apache of the American Southwest. Under the leadership of the infamous Geronimo, the resistance to the U.S. military formed the last of the Indian Wars and spanned more than 25 years, from 1861 to 1886. At the time of Geronimo's final surrender in September 1886, the United States had deployed one-fourth of its standing army, 5,000 men, to locate and capture Geronimo's remaining 35 so-called renegades. Subsequently, the U.S. government designated Geronimo and 500 of his fellow Chiricahuas, including peaceful reservation Apaches and those who had served as loyal U.S. scouts, prisoners of war, and shipped them to prison camps in western Florida. With Geronimo's surrender, many Americans believed that the wildest component of the Wild West had been tamed and that the Southwest was now safe for white civilization. Inhabitants of Arizona, New Mexico, northern Mexico, however, continued to experience and fear Apache activity well into the 1930s. These individuals were called broncos, meaning wild or untamable Apache. Sensationalized tales of crimes perpetrated by these Apache outlaws created fear, insecurity, and cautionary folklore throughout the region. Although few in number, broncos, such as the Apache Kid, Indian Juan, and Maasai, later made famous in 1954 with a film starring Burt Lancaster, made a lasting impact on the imaginations of local settlers, military men, and Western writers. Countless histories and ethnographies, memoirs, novels, biographies, films, and even comic books have recounted the Apache Wars, the Bronco period, and the legendary individuals who participated in them. The mythologizing of these Apaches began as soon as the war started, and over the next 100 years, American popular culture would portray renegades as everything from bloodthirsty terrorists to romanticize freedom fighters. Apaches have predominantly, however, played the role of villain. Although other Native American tribes have experienced vilification in popular media and historical memory, film and cultural historians acknowledge that Apaches were cast as one-dimensional villains more frequently than other groups, stereotyped as noble savages. As film experts point out, when one thinks of the savagery of the marauding Indian on screen, the Apache almost immediately comes to mind. Despite or perhaps because of this reputation for violence, Apaches and their most well-known leaders, Cochise, Magnus Coloradus, Victorio, and Geronimo, remain some of the most recognizable and celebrated Native American historical figures throughout the world. Put that away. You want us to kill you, don't you, Massa? Right out here in front of all your bloodthirsty brethren. So they can sing your praises around the campfires and start another war in your honor. It'd be a sweet death, wouldn't it, Masai? A warrior's death. But you're not a warrior anymore. You're just a whipped engine. And nobody sings about handcuffs. Take them along, Hondo. Anglo-American casting of Apaches as the most villainous, formidable, and yet admired American Indian tribe in popular culture speaks to a mystique stemming from an American nostalgia for mythic Western hypermasculinity, a deep-seated reverence for violence, and a sense of racial superiority. Explaining how and why cultural memory mythologized the history of Apache renegades, the specific role Broncos played in forming these perceptions, enabled historians to under, better understand the role of race, gender, and nostalgia in the forming of American identity, especially in the imaginations of white males. This project argues that from the 1880s to the present, producers of media about Apaches manipulated, and were in turn manipulated by, personal and political agendas, racial perceptions, gender constructions, and cultural myth-making. Examining textual and visual sources in the context of their time helps to determine how Apaches have been portrayed, by whom, and for what purpose.